Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to AEI headquarters and welcome also to our online audience. I think you're in for a treat today. This is, uh, uh, this is one that I've been waiting for for a really long time. And I'm very happy that we have uh, at long last Lawrence Peck with us. Lawrence, I think, is the leading expert on the pro-North Korea movement in the United States, something that even specialists know much too little about. And he's going to give us a briefing here today. Um, I think, Lawrence, it would be best to, uh, to do about a 45-minute briefing, and then we can have 15 minutes for discussion and questions. I'll use my prerogative as moderator to say a few words after Lawrence and to ask the first question. And then please let me know. You know, we'll put, uh, you know, we'll keep a list for questions. We'll gather them all uh, from the room and from uh, internet audience. And Lawrence will have a chance to respond to that. We'll be pretty strict about uh, signing, uh, signing off officially after 60 minutes. But if the unruly mob demands more information from Lawrence, we can continue unofficially after that. So Lawrence, welcome, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I, I in particular want to thank you, uh, Nick, Dr. Eberstadt, for making this event possible, for inviting me here to speak in, in DC. I very much appreciate that. I know it's something that I wanted to do and you wanted to make happen for quite a while. I'd also like to thank the staff here at AEI, who's making everything uh, function and run so uh, smoothly. I'd like to dedicate uh, this uh, talk to the uh, uh, blessed memory of my parents, and I, I will proceed now and get to the gist of my uh, remarks. I believe actually this is the first talk of its kind on this particular subject matter, the pro-North Korean movement in the United States, which uh, is being given at a major uh, American think tank. I'm not aware of any previous uh, events of this nature on this specific issue, which is also credit to the organizers. Uh, as uh, Dr. Eberstadt, as Nick kindly uh, mentioned, uh, I'm considered by many to be uh, one of the leading experts on pro-North Korean activities in the U.S. Perhaps it's a little by default because there aren't too many others who for decades have been researching intensively the issue as I have. Uh, not only researching, but uh, monitoring uh, the groups and activists involved, exposing them to the best of my ability to public scrutiny and opposing them for a period of several uh, decades. I first learned of uh, the existence of these forces, these pro-North Korean forces, uh, when I was a student uh, several decades ago, uh, when I encountered some of them, uh, and uh, I became more progressively more interested in the topic uh, as of that time. I should point out uh, something regarding a note regarding my sources of information. Uh, some are firsthand experience and knowledge, uh, others are reports that I receive from uh, uh, trusted individuals, uh, confidants and other uh, experts and others who uh, have uh, bits and pieces of information that are relevant. Uh, a major source is online. I review the uh, pro-North Korean forces uh, own uh, uh, social media and website uh, content, uh, as well as some of their uh, offline appearances, events and speeches. So I, I'm familiar with their own words and how they express themselves. I know it's a very little known subject. It's not even on the radar screen of uh, even some Korea experts, uh, not to mention uh, other public policy uh, uh, officials and researchers on uh, Korea in uh, general. Uh, as uh, Prince Hamlet said to uh, Heritage, uh, I'm sorry, as he said, uh, slip of the tongue, as he said to uh, Horatio, as he said to Horatio, uh, there are more things dreamt of, uh, uh, the, uh, there are more things in, in, uh, dreamt of in your philosophy than exist uh, uh, in heaven and on earth. And that's the case with this particular topic. Some people can't even imagine that it uh, exists. Uh, unfortunately, there are also some, some folks, uh, even experts in the field, people in academia, in media, uh, who uh, tend to downplay or dismiss this subject matter, in some cases are in denial 
as to it, uh, both in the ROK and here in the U.S., simply because in many cases they haven't heard of it before or they can't imagine that such a phenomena would uh, exist. However, there is historical precedent because there was, uh, as some of you know, uh, if you've studied uh, the historical uh, record, there were pro-Soviet forces uh, here in the U.S., especially in the heyday of the Stalinist uh, era and the American communist movement in the 1930s and 40s. They operated many uh, overtly uh, pro-Soviet uh, and uh, pro-communist front organizations. And more recently, many of you may be uh, aware, because it's been in the news so much, of pro-Chinese communist uh, influence operations and front groups operating in the U.S. I should note that uh, much of the information uh, that I uh, obtain are for the, are for the sources I previously outlined only because there are so few studies or reports or articles of any kind. From time to time, there'll be a Korean media report or a US media report sometimes involving my information or as a result of interviews uh, with me. But another problem is that uh, much of the information about the various pro-North groups and uh, activists being not much covered either by the U.S. or the uh, South Korean media uh, comes from, as I alluded to, from their own pro-North websites, and many of those are in the Korean language. So obviously people who don't, uh, aren't familiar with the Korean language don't have access to that kind of information and can't track the situation uh, on a regular basis. Um, one caveat which I would like to uh, explain up front is that, uh, uh, as you may imagine, but uh, which needs to be reinforced, uh, it's only a very tiny minority of either the Korean American community or the non-Korean American community who are supportive of the pro-North Korean movement, who are members of pro-North Korean groups, who are pro-North Korean uh, activists. A very tiny group, but uh, they seem to have uh, influence and, and a voice uh, outsized in comparison with their small numbers. Uh, Pro-North Korean forces actually do constitute, a point I would like to make, a movement per se. They're not merely a, a conglomeration of isolated individuals who are acting on their own. There were actually, and there have been spies, uh, to, for lack of a better term, agents, people officially, who have been convicted, charged, tried, one or the other, um, of working for the North, here in the US, uh, in Europe, France, for example, in Australia, in various other countries. But uh, interestingly, and perhaps counterintuitively, when we consider typical intelligence, what they call trade craft, or typical intelligence procedure in terms of recruiting foreign spies or agents, uh, all of the individuals uh, in the various countries which I just named who had been charged and or convicted of being uh, agents of the North, spies working for the North, had been involved with the pro-North movement, were known to be sympathizers of the North before being recruited and before being charged and convicted. So it's not as if they're able to uh, find random people and uh, and recruit them uh, for uh, with financial incentives. Obviously, the North Koreans don't have that many financial incentives at their beck and call, so they have to rely on the uh, ideological true believers. Um, I should also note that the movement, the pro-North Korean movement, the groups are uh, form an interlocking network of organizations and activists, e even with some overlap, not only as to members, but even as uh, to some of the main uh, leaders of the various uh, groups. Uh, they're a highly motivated bunch, true believers, as I mentioned, some quite fanatical, and they are well organized, as well as people are surprised to learn, well funded. And they have been growing in influence, especially when, from when one considers from a base level, uh, they've made great strides in their influence, especially, let's say, over the past uh, five and 10 years, and particularly uh, a topic I'll get to later uh, relating to their lobbying activities here in DC. Uh, they enjoy valuable support, the pro-North activists and groups do, not only from the members of their uh, respective organizations, but from some VIP individuals, some friends in high places uh, whom they've been able to recruit to their cause, whom I uh, refer to as enablers, because some of these individuals are not themselves uh, 
from North Korea. We don't consider them based on their record to be sympathizers of the North. Some of them have been critics of the North indeed, but for some reason they have been helpful to and provided assistance to the pro-North groups, have opened doors for them on Capitol Hill, whether it's a, a leader of the Mansfield Foundation or whether it's a former Secretary of Defense or whether it's the researchers at the, uh, the Quincy uh, Institute. There's also been uh, the case of the previous South Korean government, the case of the Moon administration and of uh, leaders and ordinary members of the, the Minju Party, the Democratic Party, and now in opposition in South Korea, because uh, a number of them have in various ways uh, been supportive of the pro-North movement, pro-North groups uh, here in the U.S., uh, either by uh, coming, meeting them on their visits to the U.S., or in the case of the uh, government, you know, the previous government, providing funding to them, uh, sometimes indirectly, such as, for example, through the Korea Foundation, when they would fund a, a study prepared by pro-North activists, the study, for example, uh, opposing sanctions on the North and in support of a no preconditions peace agreement. Oh, yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, forward some of my slides so you can see some of them. I'm just beginning, so it's right on, on time here. And uh, I'd like to mention that uh, in uh, applying the label pro-North Korea, uh, I do so to those who, in the first instance, admit that they're pro-North. And this applies to, of course, the true believers, the, the real fanatics. Uh, I apply the term pro-North to those who are in some cases listed by the North Korean regime, because from time to time they'll have some event or some uh, project that they're involved in where they'll put out a list of invitees or something of that nature, people on whom they rely and who they trust. Uh, I apply the label to those who are members of, of uh, what can objectively, reasonably considered pro-North groups, supporters of those groups people whose views uh, uh, by all manner of common sense uh, can be called pro-North Korea uh, because they deal in pro-North rhetoric employing such uh, tactics as double standards, one-sided critiques, uh, uh, defending the North in terms specifically of its conflict uh, with the U.S. or the ROK. Uh, I term as pro-North those who have friendly relations with the North Korean regime, who visit their on quote-unquote solidarity missions and perhaps most essentially, those who collaborate with North Korean intelligence agents. And by North Korean intelligence agents, I refer to uh, officials uh, based at the North Korean UN mission in New York. And at that mission, there are usually stationed one or two uh, individuals from the North's United Front Department. A lot of us have heard because of recent media reports about the Chinese Communist Party's United Front Work Department. Well, the North Korean Workers' Party has an analogous uh, uh, branch of operations known as, the, uh, likewise, as the United Front Department. And uh, they are tasked with uh, helping to establish uh, liaising with, uh, providing control and guidance advice to uh, pro-North Korean activists and organizations in South Korea and overseas, including here in the U.S. Uh, of course, uh, among the different uh, typology uh, involved, there are gradations and there's a spectrum of these pro-North Korean forces and groups. Some are more extreme than others, uh, some are less extreme, uh, depending on their particular uh, views and personalities. Uh, in terms of types, the different types of North Korean, pro-North Korean groups and uh, uh, organizations, uh, their strategic uh, uh, foci, their, the, the focus uh, and their tactics tend to differ and their messaging tends to differ because their target groups vary. They have different target audiences, therefore necessitating different tactics and different messaging. Uh, on the one hand, you have what I term uh, the hardcore, openly pro-North Korean groups. And these tend to be, not exclusively, but tend to be made up of some uh, Korean-American fanatical supporters of the North, in some cases who have expressed outright loyalty to the North Korean uh, regime. And they uh, tend to obviously target the Korean-American community, and therefore they function in the Korean language, such as their websites. Of course, there are also some non-Koreans in this openly pro-North category. They would be members of uh, Marxist-Leninist communist organizations or extreme, extreme uh, leftists who are open about their support of the North. Uh, there are also 
what I term front organizations, front groups, and that goes back again to the historical record of the pro-Soviet uh, front groups which were active in the U.S. in the middle uh, or early parts of the last uh, century. And these are groups and individuals who uh, are reticent to, uh, to uh, openly admit that they're pro-North because their whole modus operandi, uh, which has been successful for them to a great degree, is to portray themselves falsely merely as advocates of peace and reunification uh, in spite of the fact that their views and their ultimate goals are really quite similar to those in the hardcore openly pro-North groups. And furthermore, they collaborate the front groups and their leaders, and in ca some cases have overlapping memberships with the hardcore, openly pro-North groups. They have the same campaigns, they go to the same meetings, they're, they're, uh, they're really comrades, which uh, results in a blurring of the distinctions to somewhat to some degree of these two different categories which I have identified, the hardcore openly pro-North groups versus the uh, front groups. There's been a, a less of a hard and fast distinction there, especially in recent uh, years. You also have, of course, the useful idiots, the dupes, uh, who, uh, for various uh, reasons, uh, go along with uh, fellow travelers, along with the pro-North Korean movement. They'll uh, stand up for them, vouch for them, uh, sometimes participate in their uh, campaigns, uh, even if some of them uh, are not uh, uh, particularly well disposed to every aspect of the North Korean regime or for its policies or even in some cases who might venture some uh, criticism of North Korea but nevertheless they're they're linked to the pro-north movement in the sense of uh, 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 being fellow travelers and uh, and uh, to, to use the old phrase, useful idiots in terms of their collaboration with, and they're willing to, especially in the, in the nature of VIPs and influential people, to lend their names and thus their respectability to these pro-North uh, forces. As I mentioned, uh, the various types of group do have indeed the same long range goals to defend the North Korean regime and to weaken the US ROK uh, alliance. And uh, they do have, in, in many cases, uh, because it's a small a group of uh, a pool, a small group of individuals, uh, overlapping memberships and close relations among the leaders. Uh, there are also some branches of pro-North groups in the ROK in South Korea, which uh, have uh, units, branches here in the U.S. And uh, they're uh, uh, part of this uh, network, but of course uh, they're focused on uh, also Korean uh, domestic politics as well as the pro-North movement here. Uh, some of the uh, groups, particularly the, those of the front group variety, uh, tend to come into existence and in some cases then disappear when their usefulness or when the specific topics which they were created to address are no longer relevant or uh, even disappear in some cases. Uh, to cite some examples, uh, there, were, uh, there was an organization specifically dedicated to opposing the THAAD anti-missile system, and that's been uh, basically shelved. Uh, and now there, uh, there have been established uh, uh, new front organizations which focus on the topic of the hour, which is the overall, one of the overall recent goals of the pro-North movement, which is to promote the idea of a no preconditions peace treaty between the U.S. and North Korea. So they have these shifting issues in addition to the shifting uh, nomenclature of the the fronts. Uh, the members of these groups uh, usually get their message out by relying on uh, word games, the parsing of words, uh, sophistry. Uh, they use euphemisms to uh, to uh, mask their true uh, uh, intentions and their true beliefs often, especially when addressing uh, neutral or even hostile audiences or mainstream uh, media. They use the old tactics of whataboutism, uh, distraction, uh, emotional appeals. They even in some some cases appeal to certain individuals, certainly not pro-North, of the realist school, the real politic uh, uh, experts and uh, policy uh, individuals who they think they can somehow uh, uh, win over to their side on specific issues. But again, there's a spectrum involved here, a gradation of different groups and individuals and their levels of commitment and activism on behalf of the North.
With regard to the activists, the individuals who are part of this movement, which is always a subject of, of fascination, uh, there are some who are, uh, just happen to be supporters of the North per se. Uh, they admire the North Korean regime. Uh, some are uh, just uh, good old-fashioned communists of the Stalinist or Trotskyist and neo-Trotskyist uh, variety, some of the extreme left, uh, far left, the dupes whom I previously uh, referred to, there are also some opportunists, uh, especially uh, individuals who uh, think, feel that they can uh, increase their own visibility uh, or stature by tagging along with these uh, groups, do so for reasons of ego or perhaps because uh, they wanted to ingratiate themselves with the previous South Korean uh, Moon Jae-in administration. Uh, there are also, in, within the Korean community, those of the uh, ultra and left nationalist variety, uh, the Minjok uh, uh, group, as they would be referred to in Korean, uh, uh, pursuant to uh, the strains of North Korean ultra nationalist uh, uh, ideology. Uh, there are also some isolationists, some extreme isolationists who find that in some cases their views coincide with those of the pro-North activists. They're religious figures, believe it or not, uh, uh, adherents of liberation theology. There are actually quite a few clergy who are adherents of, of, of left-wing, such as liberation uh, ideological strands, and therefore they uh, are involved with these pro-North groups, sometimes at a leadership level. Uh, there are academics and others uh, who are adherents of critical theory, uh, critical race theory being the one that's been in the news. Uh, Years, but there's also a branch thereof uh, known as critical Asian studies. And the adherents uh, of those of critical Asian studies are active uh, in the pro-North uh, movement. Uh, you may be surprised to learn that there are also a number of racist and neo-Nazi types within the pro-North movement, conspiracy theorists, uh, who uh, uh, are the type of people you wouldn't expect uh, to be uh, involved in a pro-North Korean movement, yet uh, on the pro-North Korean sites, particularly the ones that operate in the Korean language, you'll find the most uh, rabid examples of, uh, of racism and uh, anti-Semitism and various other forms of, of hatred. Uh, there are some people who may be attracted or involved in the movement, I should say, not so much attracted, uh, due to blackmail. And by blackmail, I mean not only those individuals who've been in the North and have been in compromising positions, uh, and I stress the word positions in compromise, positions, but to those who have uh, Korean Americans who may have family members in the North and therefore hope that by being involved with or sympathizing with the pro-North forces here, it may, number one, uh, uh, enable them further access to their families or even preferential uh, treatment or uh, conversely avoid punishment uh, to their families in some cases. And there uh, are, of course, also the, the various degrees of street radicals who are involved in the, in the movement, uh, as you would find in any extremist movement, but there are also uh, professional professional uh, individuals, academics, doctors, lawyers. Uh, on the other side of the coin, as, uh, as Karl Marx would put it, there are some lumpen uh, elements uh, involved in the movement, clergy, as I referred to, but also some folks in the media, some people involved in business, uh, and uh, anti-military types, anti-U.S. military types in particular, ranting about militarization and those kinds of issues, and even uh, a few ultra, ultra libertarian types, and by that I don't mean uh, by any stretch of the imagination mainstream libertarians, but I mean some real fringe far left and far right elements within that particular movement. Uh, as to their beliefs, some of them are supporters of the Juche ideology, the North's uh, state ideology. Some of them are, are involved in the whole concept of a third worldism, Tiermondism, and uh, uh, they view North Korea as one of the uh, repressed uh, nations of what they term the global south, regardless of its uh, geographical location. Uh, some of them, as I mentioned, are Marxist-Leninist or far leftists, uh, particularly those in the Korean American community, far left nationalists, the Uri Minjokiri uh, type of people. Some are motivated just by general uh, garden variety anti-American hatred of the, uh, of the U.S. And uh, they've been uh, also uh, involved in this movement because uh, they find a welcome home there because uh, almost without exception, these pro-North activists are deeply hostile to their own uh, country and to their fellow uh, citizens, as I will demonstrate uh, a little bit later in some of the, the details. There are those who uh, adopt a kind of pa d'enemy à gauche, no enemies on the left uh, philosophy uh, by which they fall into the same category as these people, find common cause. They're moral relativists 
Some of them are uh, supportive of the Chinese Communist Party, and therefore because of the, the so-called Lips and Teeth Alliance that, uh, that was founded uh, at the time of the Korean War between uh, Beijing and Pyongyang, uh, they're therefore tied into the pro-North movement. Some are uh, historical revisionists, uh, both of the Korean War and afterwards. Some uh, anti-communists, -anti they just can't stand the idea of any opposition to any form of communism. As I mentioned, the critical theorists, particularly in academia. But they're also strangely, uh, which you might not imagine because of the, the status of these groups uh, within North Korea, there are feminist and some feminist leaders who've latched onto and become part of the movement. And some LGBT individuals, there's some groups that actually have uh, a large number of LGBT folks in them, which uh, again is counter intuitive because of the fate that would uh, await them if they were to be unfortunate enough to live in North Korea. Uh, some of these activists promote uh, violence against fellow Americans, some cases against me personally in terms of threats. Uh, thank goodness none that have materialized. But uh, as I also mentioned, uh, 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 a number of them, particularly in the uh, Korean uh, language, are uh, really uh, viciously uh, racist and anti-Semitic, even against fellow Koreans. Um, one key point which I'd like to stress is the ties which these individuals have to the pro-North Korean regime, which is uh, very important to understand because it differentiates these individuals from others who, pursuant to their God-given constitutional rights as Americans, uh, certainly have the right to petition their representatives and to make their views known through various means. But these are, are individuals who, in some cases, may be skirting the law uh, because not, they're not only tied to the North Korean regime uh, in various means, such as visiting there and uh, expressing loyalty to, uh, to the regime there, but who meet with, communicate with, and have for years collaborated with on various projects, the North Korean agents uh, whom I referred to earlier from the North's United Front Department at the North's mission in the United Nations in New York, or sometimes in Pyongyang itself uh, prior to the 2017 travel ban, but also in third countries where they'll go to meet them, whether it's in Southeast Asia or whether they visit Japan to meet with uh, individuals uh, there when they visit the headquarters of the pro-North Korean organization in uh, Tokyo, the Chosen Soren, as they say in Japanese, or in Korean Chongyun, which is a kind of a second best alternative for them now. They seem to be flocking to Chongyun because they can no longer, since the travel ban, visit uh, North Korea. There are also uh, financial gains to be sought uh, and to be, which have been uh, uh, achieved by some of the pro-North uh, uh, groups in terms uh, of, uh, for example, uh, getting commissions for visa applications, which they uh, handle, according to Korean American media reports, which they handle on behalf of the North Korean UN mission. They kind of do this processing of those who prior to 2017 would want to visit the North and they gain some kind of commission from that. And they're uh, emotionally, psychologically, there's some benefit because some of the leading pro-North activists have actually received medal from the North Korean regime, the Kim Il-sung medal or the Fatherland Liberation Medal of some of the, the hardcore pro-North uh, activists, especially those that operate in the Korean language uh, in, within the Korean American community, uh, who are awarded uh, for the work that they have done here, the propaganda work on behalf of the North. There are also, uh, this being D.C., it's important to mention lobbying and influence activities, which have in the past uh, 10 years, and particularly in the past five years, taken on uh, a much more uh, important role in terms of the act overall activities of the pro-North movement going beyond uh, their usual uh, activities such as educational projects, uh, particularly at the, uh, the secondary uh, university level, uh, their various meetings and petition campaigns, their media outreach, uh, uh, and these lobbying and influence activities, while uh, operating in tandem with those other activities, have really flourished uh, in, the, in recent years uh, because they have been uh, meeting with uh, various uh, members of Congress from the House and Senate, as well as with current and former government uh, officials. And from some of them, uh, they get uh, welcome hearings, uh, sympathetic hearings, because, as I said, they uh, portray themselves in a very deceitful uh, uh, manner. And uh, the congressional staff who are uh, involved in these meetings, uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, fail to do their due diligence 
and not look into the fact that, uh, for example, the person who's coming in, who's, uh, who's uh, addressed to them or introduced to them, I should say, as uh, a peace activist is really a, a pro-North Korean uh, uh, fanatic who rants about uh, destroying U.S. imperialism or the, the elderly Korean-American gentleman who's introduced as a, as a clergyman who's a peace activist, uh, has a website which uh, endorses violence against uh, uh, Americans and, uh, and has a racist uh, content and content uh, 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 fawnishly uh, expressing loyalty to the North. And uh, uh, many of those uh, who have been targeted are those on the left wing of the of the Democratic Party, uh, mostly, and uh, therefore those are the people with whom they've been able to attract the pro-North groups and activists to some of their meetings and involve in some of their campaigns and to co-sponsor some of the legislation which they uh, support. Uh, again, a key element in this are some of the VIPs, the friends in high places who have been uh, uh, assisting and lending their good names to uh, these pro-North activists and uh, help them gain uh, publicity and protect them from criticism by uh, defending them. Uh, Furthermore, uh, I should add that uh, the pro-North forces have been active in opposing the North Korea human rights movement uh, of groups and activists here like those from the uh, Committee for Human Rights in North Korea and the North Korea Freedom Coalition. They've been really pushing back both rhetorically and in their campaigns against uh, any struggle to uh, improve the human rights of the people of uh, North Korea. I should add, uh, almost in conclusion, that uh, uh, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il in their published works, especially Kim Il-sung, would address the issue of pro-North Korean forces overseas and even specifically within the U.S. He, in some of his uh, meetings with reporters or meetings with Korean-American sympathizers, he would stress the importance of forming uh, overseas uh, networks and groups in the United States to uh, pursue what he would call peace and unification, but would actually be uh, activism on behalf of and in support of the North. And he would encourage that in some of his uh, uh, statements, which are, of course, taken as gospel by uh, the supporters of the North here. There's also this degree of control to some extent and over some groups, which the North Korean regime uh, exercises, which I will uh, explain shortly, pursuant to uh, their, the North's united front uh, strategy, which uh, has been a strategy going back, uh, of course, to the time of uh, Lenin and uh, reinforced by uh, Stalin and Mao during various historical periods, and uh, which the North Korean uh, regime also uh, uses as a tactic to unite with any possibly supportive forces while trying to uh, isolate any oppositional forces and thereby increase their, their power and influence. I did refer to the United Front Department. Uh, those are the individuals who are responsible for and who provide advice to and meet with uh, these groups, particularly those based in New York City who are allowed to travel within a certain radius of the UN, but uh, who, who will sometimes receive visitors uh, or otherwise communicate with from these pro-North Korean organizations. Uh, there are also the case in terms of support for these pro-North groups, the pro-North movement in the U.S., of support they receive from the ROK. Uh, I had mentioned that there are some ROK politicians from the current opposition party, from the Minju, the Democratic Party, who on their visits to the U.S., shockingly, uh, will meet with some of these pro-North groups and, and activists. Um, and uh, who will in some cases invite them to Korea to participate even in government-sponsored or affiliated seminars and conferences. And as I did mention, there is some funding under the previous government, the Moon government, which went through, for example, in one case, the Korea Foundation to fund a, a report authored by pro-North Korean uh, activists, which was then used to lobby a Congress. And uh, finally, I should note that uh, 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 a group which is, I do not characterize as pro-North Korean, but which is a left-wing uh, group, which has very close ties to the former Moon government and even uh, former President Moon personally and to the Minju party and which uh, even though it operates in the U.S. as a 501c3 nonprofit as many of the other uh, pro-North groups do, this particular Korean-American group uh, 
uh, has been extremely active uh, in spite of its nonprofit status in lobbying, which seems to be uh, skirting at a minimum of the U.S. tax regulations. But it seems like 90 percent uh, from their social media and their online presence uh, reveals that the, what they're doing almost all the time, uh, with few exceptions, is congressional lobbying. And the name of this group, uh, the, the acronym is KPAC, and it's known uh, in English as the Korean American uh, Public Action Committee. They don't call themselves a, a traditional uh, fundraising pack, public action committee, not political action. Action committee, and uh, in Korean they're known as uh, Miju Minju Chamyo Forum, and they're headed by a fellow out in in Southern California who, I, as I mentioned, has close personal ties to left wing uh, parties and forces in Korea, and they have been uh, along with making common cause with some of the pro North forces because this group KPAC tends to be almost like a front. Uh, of the uh, left in Korea rather than of the North Korean regime, but they collaborate with in some instances of, uh, of uh, activities, and they do have uh, a few members and even an advisor who uh, I would uh, characterize as pro-North in spite of the fact that the movement itself is more geared towards domestic Korean politics. And they've been very active in promoting, along with the pro-North groups, the H.R. 1369 bill uh, proposed by Representative Sherman and co-sponsored by uh, a couple of dozen other uh, folks from the left wing of his party, whether it's uh, Ilan Omar, or Rashida Tlaib, or uh, Barbara Lee, uh, or uh, uh, others of that ideological uh, ilk. Uh, and uh, along with the pro-North groups, that's really the one of the main topics that they've been pushing now for a no preconditions peace treaty with the North. I'd like to, uh, before getting to some of my uh, informational slides, which I think you'll find fascinating, I'd like to note that uh, according to what I've explained to you regarding the nature of these groups, uh, the, the society that they defend and the, the society the, whom the, that they vitriolically condemn, it reminds me of, uh, of an adage from the Jewish uh, Midrash, which uh, goes uh, as follows, uh, those who are kind to the cruel will end up being cruel to the kind. And I feel that perfectly encapsulates their worldview, uh, being sympathetic to the North, but being viciously uh, hostile to uh, their own country, the US, as well as to the Republic of Korea. Uh, that being said, uh, it uh, constitutes my introductory remarks, and I would now like to go to some uh, photographs to further explicate some of the points which I made. Uh, here's a case study in the form of the group Women Cross DMZ slash uh, Korea Peace Now. Women Cross DMZ, it was a classic uh, pro-North Korean front organization, as I characterize it. And it recently, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, established a, a lobbying arm under its control called Korea Peace Now. So uh, I usually refer to the groups as Women Cross DMZ slash Korea Peace Now. And uh, on the right side in the center, you can see the leader and founder of that group and previous other pro-North front groups. Oops, uh, previous ones that she had less success with, but this current one, which she's had much more success with, her name is Christine Ahn, and she's in the center there. And as I said, she's been involved with or an alumnus of many uh, uh, such pro-North groups, uh, having most success in the current incarnation of Women Cross DMZ Korea Peace. Now, this was an event in Seoul, Korea, hosted, as you can see on the right side, the gentleman there, the Korean gentleman was the, the late mayor of Seoul, Mayor Park, who hosted uh, a gala event at City Hall in Seoul for uh, these groups when they had their 2015 cross-border march across the DMZ after holding a number of propaganda events in Pyongyang, at which the USA was described as a kingpin of international terrorism to the applause of the members. Uh, they then crossed the border and came into Seoul. On the left, of course, you see one of the, the VIP uh, supporters who's uh, been very active in the group and uh, defending them against any and all criticism, uh, the feminist icon Gloria Steinem. Uh, in the back, actually directly behind Ms. An in the center, you see a, an academic, Professor Susie Kim of Rutgers, who's been involved with attempts at historical revisionism and attempting to beautify some of the, uh, even some of the old fashioned Korean War era pro-North Korean uh, front groups. Uh, the reason I put up that photo is to juxtapose it with the photo on the left side, which uh, shows the, one of the doors to the North Korean UN mission in New York. In front of it, you see the flower uh, cortege there, the flower, uh, uh, 
ring and uh, on the label you'll see 615 that refers to a pro-north korean organization uh, one of those which uh, actually uh, has a branch in pyongyang but is really uh, most active in in seoul in south korea you get oh shil chun we one way the 615 uh, implementation committee of course its name reflecting uh, the june 15th agreement between north and south but it is a, a pretty much an openly pro-north korean group which has branches in cities throughout the u.s and here in new york this was the anniversary or actually the death of the, the the time of the death of kim jong-il and one of their representatives delivered to the north korean mission uh this uh, flower uh in condolence and the gentleman you see there the bald man in the suit and tie his name is pak chol and he was uh, at that time this happened to be 2000 of course 11 late 2011 he happened to be the uh, united front department agent uh, at the north's mission the one who was responsible for liaising with communicating with assisting advising pro-North Korean forces, including Christine Ahn and her group, because it was with him uh, who Christine uh, Ahn collaborated and communicated uh, to organize uh, her 2015 march. She had known him before then for many years. She had first met him in, in North Korea on a tour uh, with another pro-North Korean group, and she had been in contact with him. And then when he came to the U.S., she uh, was in contact with him and to arrange uh, that uh, effort. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, in one email to her, which was uh, perhaps accidentally or uh, un un imprudently posted online, he even instructs her to focus her march on the need for a peace agreement, which she then proceeded precisely to do. And uh, uh, there you see uh, an example of the influence operations, uh, which I had uh, alluded to. Uh, Pak Chol now had a successor, Rigi Ho, who was his successor as a United Front agent in the mission, uh, who now has also left. Uh, but he, as I understand, he has not been succeeded by anyone because, as you know, during the pandemic, North Korea sealed its borders, so none of their diplomats, United Front Department or otherwise, were going back and forth. So, as I understand, uh, at least until this moment, that position is, is perhaps now empty, unless uh, just last week they sent someone that I'm unaware of. Uh, this is an example of a, an organization, Action One Korea, which started out funded, uh, established in Los Angeles, with the large Korean diaspora community as a front group. And they would claim that they're just for peace and unification and try and recruit a, a broad mainstream of Korean American society, but later morphed into a openly pro-North Korean and viciously anti-American group. The lady who you see circled there uh, on the left is Chung Yun Jin, uh, from Los Angeles, although she goes back and forth often. She's, I think, based in Korea now, and she uh, has become more openly pro-North. She goes around Seoul and other cities of uh, of the ROK giving lectures about promoting hate, literally promoting hatred of America, and uh, a pro-North Korean activist uh, who you see there at a meeting of pro-North leaders in Los Angeles. The gentleman who you see with the outstretched arm next to her is one of what they, uh, the South Koreans refer to as one of the representative or most infamous of the pro-North leaders at least in the LA area, Mr. Rogil Nam, who passed away uh, from COVID a couple of years ago. He was the leader of the fanatically pro-North Korean Minjok Tongshin group and website. And uh, you see there, he had been to North Korea, I think a total of 75 or 76 times before he passed away. And uh, he was one of the true fanatical uh, believers. And uh, you see him there with uh, with this uh, with this lady, Ms. Chung from AOK. But on the left side, uh, and this shows the interaction with Korea also, there was an advertisement which in Korea announces a protest rally which was going to form a human chain encircling and calling for the removal of the main U.S. base in South Korea at Pyeongtaek. Uh, pro-North Korean forces and other far-left forces there uh, were going to try that. Uh, fortunately, I was able to warn some of the uh, patriotic and pro-American forces of Korea of this event, and they staged a counter-rally, which outnumbered by about 20 to 1 the pro-North Korean forces at that same location. Uh, Chung Yun jin happened to be on a podcast and announced this event uh, at, on which Noam Chomsky was on the podcast, and Chomsky chimed in, oh, wonderful, great event. Uh, here is another case study of uh, two of the main uh, pro-North groups in the U.S. which target the Korean American community. I previously referred to the 615 Committee, which has branches in various U.S. cities. Uh, KANCC is the abbreviation for, again, one of the most well-known, because it's one of the most fanatical pro-North groups in the U.S., Korean American National Coordinating Council, Jamie Dongpo Chungguk Yonapwe. They have their office in New York have a website, primarily their means of communication. Their leaders happen to be based out in LA. It's one of those groups closely 
tied to the North Korean regime and to the North Korean mission, including its uh, intelligence agents based there. This photo actually is a member, a photo of members of both groups uh, taken at Mount Baekdu, the, the so-called holy side of the North Korean revolution tied to the Kim dynasty cult of personality. And they were there a few years ago, uh, invited by the North, obviously, with a banner which reads in Korean, uh, which expresses their loyalty to the North Korean regime and which translates as expressing their intention to fully implement the final instructions of the great leaders Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. Uh, and there you see actually in al almost about the middle of the, of the banner there with a white cap, dark sunglasses, a black jacket, and a white t-shirt, uh, uh, a pastor, uh, an ordained Methodist clergyman, Yoon Il-sung, who for many years was the leader of KNCC out in Southern California. He was recently uh, purged because uh, uh, some rival pro-North Korean groups, actually the rival group of the previous slide, the uh, gentleman who I showed you complained uh, that this gentleman was involved in some sexual antics with young pro-North Korean activists from another group, uh, which I'll uh, mention. But uh, uh, the interesting point, and that I mentioned that is, not to be salacious, but uh, when the rival group of KNCC complained, they complained to the North Korean UN mission and to the United Front Department individual there, which clearly indicates to any reasonable person the level of control which the North Korean regime exercises over some of these, particularly the hardcore openly pro-North groups such as KNCC and 615 and Minjok Tongshin. And so this fellow was unceremoniously purged and they replaced him with another uh, pro-North Korean uh, fanatic. And uh, that was the story of, uh, of that group. That was the group actually KNCC, which derived some commissions or used to uh, from Korean Americans who wanted to travel to the North by processing the visas on behalf of the UN mission. Noruto, which means stepping stone in Korean, is a pro-North Korean youth group. They're, bra they're based in New York, and they used to run semi-annual uh, solidarity missions, their term, solidarity visits to North Korea. As you can see, that's from their social media, very, uh, very highly praising the North Korean regime. Uh, it, it is a youth group, uh, primarily of, of uh, Korean Americans, which also maintains close ties to the North Korean regime, and especially in the form of the North Korean uh, mission in New York. This is the group that I mentioned that has a large number of members uh, who are LGBT individuals, uh, who apparently don't realize uh, the uh, attitude that the North Korean government would officially hold towards them, regardless of how they're welcomed by the North Korean uh, regime. Here is an aspect of the non-Korean Marxist-Leninist involvement in the movement. On the right side, you can see there, the non-Korean person is Brian Becker, who is one of the top comrades, one of the top uh, American communist leaders. He heads up the, group, the Party for Socialism and Liberation, a Marxist-Leninist group of the Trotskyist variety, uh, although some would call them almost neo-Stalinist because of their support for Stalin-style regimes across the world. And you see, I put in parentheses there, ANSWER, that's their fully controlled front group, uh, ANSWER, uh, which you may be familiar with if you see any of the demonstrations here in Washington or other cities with their trademark yellow with black lettering signs, uh, whether it's at a pro-North or a pro-Cuba or an anti-military or an anti Israel demonstration, you'll see answer. Uh, on the left side, and that was in Seoul, by the way, him protesting there. On the left side, you'll see a picture again of Becker on the left. And the Korean uh, American actually on his right is Jang Min Ho, uh, Michael Jang, who is a Korean American who uh, uh, was convicted of uh, uh, being part of a North Korean spy ring in South Korea several years ago. It was the Il Shimhae, the One Heart uh, North Korean spy network, which he was involved with. Uh, he apparently would uh, connect with North Korean agents with China and also uh, allegedly some training in North Korea, a Korean American from California uh, who was working in Korea and was apparently recruited. Uh, and uh, he was did his jail time in, in the ROK and then was deported back to the U.S. where he became involved in the pro-North movement here. And of course, as part of the pro-North movement, involved with some of the Marxist-Leninist uh, groups. By the way, his wife, when he was doing, involved in these espionage, act, espionage activities, his wife uh, in Seoul with him, his wife was serving as a secretary to a high-ranking U.S. officer at the military base then at Yongsan. Uh, here you see the link with uh, politics in the ROK, the South Korean uh, political situation. And on the right, you see members of uh, Women Cross DMZ, Korea Peace Now. You can see Christine Ahn wearing the dress 
uh, uh, with the uh, high heel shoes at the center there. And right next to her, with the folded hands, with the white paper in front of him, is Moon Jong-in, one of the top foreign policy advisors to uh, former President Moon and an, an ideological confrere of Moon and his uh, Democratic Party, who was uh, visiting the U.S. Uh, to assist uh, groups like Women Cross DMZ and other pro North forces in lobbying uh, for uh, uh, what they call an end to the Korean War, a no preconditions uh, bill of concessions peace agreement with the North, and uh, he was making common cause with that particular uh, group. On the left side, you see there President Moon. This was actually just before the election of 2017 when he was still campaigning. And uh, at that time, actually, I was told by a Wall Street Journal correspondent that uh, he declined an invitation with, with the Wall Street Journal at that particular time. Yet he did give a, uh, a sit-down exclusive interview to uh, this uh, gentleman who you see, the non-Korean there with him, an American self-admitted Marxist and member of pro-North Korean front groups, Tim Shorok, who writes for the Radical uh, Nation magazine. And yet uh, he was... Uh, that. It, it, it's kind of an indication yet of his of Moon's ideological orientation that he was able to he was willing to give an interview to this very fringe character who who has characterized the the ROK as being a, a fascist uh, a state. On the human rights issue, uh, here uh, we have a case study of the work which the pro North uh, movement engages in against human rights for the people of North Korea. On the right side, you'll see an advertisement from the group Nodotol, which I referred to earlier. And this was held as an emergency event uh, when uh, the UN came out under Judge Kirby with its Commission of Inquiry report on North Korea, condemning the North's crimes against humanity. Nodotol decided to have an emergency meeting uh, uh, opposing uh, the report and to teach its members and to instruct sympathizers how to argue against uh, the Commission of Inquiry report. And uh, a number of pro-North activists uh, online endorsed and expressed their support for that uh, uh, event. On the left side, you see one of the signs uh, from a demonstration, these two pro-North groups, it's being blocked by one of the, uh, one of the uh, labels down there. Uh, but uh, it, you can see just barely, it was sponsored by KANCC and by the Pan-Korean uh, Alliance for Reunification, which is the English name of the South Korean-based a group, Pominyon, which has branches in some cities across the U.S. And as you can see, their rhetoric there, stop using North Korea human rights as a weapon for another war on the Korean uh, peninsula. Here also, again, you have the campaign against human rights. On the left, again, is, is Christy Nahn, um, several, many years ago, uh, testifying in Seoul to a human rights commission there, which at that time under a left-wing administration was, uh, was doing the bidding of, uh, of uh, its left-wing uh, uh, leaders, the Human Rights Commission. And she was testifying there uh, against, at that time, uh, the, the passage, uh, the debates surrounding the U.S.-North Korea Human Rights Act. And she was saying it's just a tool of the American conservatives and the right-wing Christians, and it'll do no good, and it, it should be opposed at all costs. She also later opposed the South, South Korea, the ROK's uh, uh, human, uh, North Korea Human Rights Act. And on the right side, uh, turning to academia again for a moment, uh, you have a Japanese-based uh, website, which often features the work of pro-North Korean activists in the U.S. And this was a piece by... Uh, a critical Asian studies, critical race theory uh, academic at UC Santa Cruz named Christine Hong, who is one of the more fanatical uh, members of the pro-North uh, movement involved with a lot of the groups that Christine Ahm was involved with. Uh, and here she wrote an article specifically and quite vituperatively denouncing, attacking, slandering uh, the, pro -nor the, the North Korea human rights movement in the U.S., North Korea human rights groups, leaders of the North Korea human rights movement in the U.S., defectors, uh, slandering them with all kinds of... Uh, of uh, insult. She actually, Christine Hong, who you don't see there, but uh, she actually is so fanatical, she actually complained to the State Department that they should never use the word gulag in reference to North Korea's political concentration camps because it's something that, uh, that uh, she thinks uh, portrays the North in a negative <laughs> light, obviously. Uh, this is just the final slide regarding the anti-human rights activities of the pro-North uh, Korean uh, movement in the U.S., uh, the euphemisms which they employ, the blame shifting, the moral equivalency arguments which they use to counter uh, human rights uh, related uh, arguments and activities. 
and how we should counter the pro-North movement, and indeed how I and others have been countering them. Uh, my main tactic has been exposure uh, under the theory that uh, sunlight is the best disinfectant to let the general public, the media, political academic circles know the true, uh, become familiar with the true activities and the, more importantly, the true views and motivations of these groups so that they won't be duped or deceived by them and to provide reliable uh, information uh, about them. And finally, to encourage uh, North Korea experts and media uh, uh, reporters who cover Korea not to dismiss or downplay or even deny this phenomenon, which does indeed uh, exist.